Okay, guys, good morning and welcome to our Get Fit Crew Candid chat. So we are October, wow, October 21st already. Getting into the holidays, my favorite time. All right, so today I want to talk to you guys about the W's of sharing your story and the W's on how to share your journey and the things that you need to think about when sharing. So first, let me talk about why to share your story before we get into the W's of sharing. So it's very, very important, and I have learned this through building the business myself, that you need to share your personal journey. You have to share your personal journey because if you don't, then without sharing your journey, people aren't gonna see what you're doing in order to know how you got to the transformation that you have. So if you're not sharing, then, I'm just making sure everyone's needed. If you're not sharing, then you're not gonna have anybody knowing what you're doing. You can't just post a transformation picture and be like, okay, look at me. And they haven't watched the journey of what you're doing. But hold on one second, I'm trying to change my view here. Okay, there we go. So you can't just post about all other things, even in the background, if you're drinking your shake and in the background, you're doing your workouts and you're doing these things, if you're not posting it, people don't know you're doing it. I know not all of our friends see our posts, but you still have to share your journey. So when you make new friends and they scroll on your page, they can see that, okay, you're into fitness. Okay, you, you eat healthy. Look at the food pictures or look at this or look at that. Or maybe you're, you're posting tips on fitness or whatever, but you have to be sharing your journey. And you have to share it unapologetically. You have to be okay sharing your journey because first of all, you should be very proud of what you're doing because it takes a very strong-willed person to work out every day, to take care of their nutrition every day. So you should be proud and you should want to shout that from the rooftops. But then there's somebody out there that is like the you that you used to be before you started this journey. And they need an inspiration. They need motivation. They need somebody to show them what to do. And that's not going to happen if you're not sharing. Because what's going to happen is they're probably friends with a different beach body coach that is sharing their journey. And that's the person that's going to inspire them. And then you're going to wonder, oh my God, they started 21 Day Fix. Why didn't they start with me? Well, because if you're not sharing that you're doing the journey and you're not sharing that you can help somebody else do the journey with you, then how do they know that they can join you? A lot of people don't understand that how this whole beach body coaching thing works. They don't get it. So if we're not sharing with them, they have no idea what they can do. So this is why I wanted to bring up the W's on sharing your story. This is like my thought process when I post things because you have to know who your audience is. You have to know who, who you want to reach with your post, your niche. Mine are moms that struggle, blended families, single moms, newly divorced moms. Um, that's, that's who I am thinking of. God bless you. <clears throat> that's who I am thinking of when I'm posting. And when I post, I'm thinking of the W's. So first you have who. Who are you talking to? If you're just, if you don't have anyone in mind of who you're talking to when you're posting, your posts are just going to be thrown out there and they might not reach anyone. But if you dig a little bit deeper in your posts on who you're talking to, your posts are going to reach someone because they're going to feel like if you're visualizing the person you're talking to, that person is going to feel like you're talking to them when they read your post. Have you ever read a post from somebody that you're like, damn. She is so talking to me right now, or he is so talking to me right now. Like you read this post and you're like, that is so me. That's what you want people to feel like when they're seeing your workout post <clears throat> or they're seeing a motivational post or when you share your story. It's those types of things. You, you want them to think like, oh my gosh, this is so me. This is me. And look what she did to change that. Okay, so you want to think of who you're talking to. You want to think what. So these are the who, what, when, and whys of your story. The what is what do they need to know? What are you doing? Without saying the name of the program, because you don't want them going on Amazon. 
You don't want them Googling it and just buying it from Beachbody and becoming a lead to somebody else and it's because of your post that inspired them to do this. So like, we're gonna start shift shop on Monday. I'm doing my 25 minute cardio, my 25 minute strength. You know, today's strength training, today's cardio day. You don't have to say what program it is, but you can talk about how you're making the shift with your body, you're making the shift with your mind, but they're not gonna put it together and say, oh, she must be doing shift shop. You know what I mean? But you can say little parts and little things. And think about it too, if you're listening to what the trainers are saying in the workouts, they're giving you motivation in one way or another to keep pushing through. So that's something that you could you can talk about in your post. You know, you're doing this workout, but your other W is why. Why are you working out every day? I remember before I became a runner that I would watch people, like when I would go out in the mornings and drive to work or I'd go out on the weekends and it's like seven o'clock, I'm like, why are these people running? Like, to me, I did not understand. One, they're up way too early to be doing any sort of exercise. And two, what are they running for? Why do they do that? Like, doesn't it hurt their legs? Doesn't it hurt their body? Like, it looks too strenuous for me. I never understood it. I always said how I would feel like a hamster in a wheel if I was just running in circles, you know, around the block. I didn't understand it because I wasn't doing it. So you need to kind of like dig a little deep into your why, why you work out every day. Um, and you don't have to share your why every single time that you post about your workout or you post why you chose not to eat the Oreo cookies or anything like that, but you can share it sometimes and you could share why or why you push through. Today was a tough day. I really didn't want to do my workout today, but I pushed myself through because X, Y, Z. Share with them because maybe they're on a journey and it's just getting out every day and going for a walk. And they need to push themselves and push through, and they're not. So maybe that'll inspire them to push through. And then you're going to get a thank you so much. You inspired me today to go out and take a walk. That's a big deal to some people, just going out and taking a walk. To us, that might not be a big deal because we, we've done Chris's workouts and Shanti's workouts. So to us, taking a walk is like our relaxed time. But to them, it's a big deal. So you need, to, you need to think of who you're talking to, what you're doing, and why you're doing it. Think of those things as you're posting. And then the last W is when. Not when you're doing your workout, 5 a.m., 9 a.m., 5 o'clock at night. When you were like them. Because normally, that's our niche. The person that we're talking to and the people we're trying to attract usually are who we were before Beachbody. So you need to think about when you were that person. What would inspire you? What would motivate you? Like I'll never forget with Tara, it was one sentence that inspired her. And I just said, are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? Because that's how I felt. That's how I felt. I was just sick and tired of being sick and tired. I was always getting sick. I was always exhausted. And that's why I always got sick because I was always so run down. So you have to, you have to remember. It's almost like when people get rich and famous. And what do they say? Always remember where you came from. It's the same thing with sharing your story. Like I am in nothing like the person I used to be before this business and when I started this business. But I will never forget who that person was. I will never forget who I was because there are so many old me's out there that need my help. And if I try to forget who that person was and all the struggles I went through and all the turmoil in my life, I'm never going to reach that person. So you have to remember who you were and you might still be a little bit of that person. If you're just starting this business or anything like that, that might still be you. But a lot of times we're afraid to share that because we look at it as a negative and we don't want our Facebook to be a negative place for people to come because we're afraid that they're not going to want to follow us. But what you have to remember is there's so many yous out there. The you you were before becoming a coach, the you you were at the beginning of becoming a coach, and the you you were yesterday because every day we strive to be better than how we were yesterday. So there's always a you out there. And if we don't share that about ourselves, we're not going to attract that person because they're going to look at our posts and be like, oh, of course it's easy for her. She's perfect. 
look at how great her body looks or look at how perfect she is and she's always happy and there's always this she never has her her life is rainbows and butterflies I share the good the bad the ugly I share everything I don't just have my Facebook be rainbows and butterflies and only the positive things in my life if I'm struggling I post about my struggles you know why because I'm reaching out to my friends for help and that's something I used to never do I never reached out to anyone for help so keeping these W's in mind when you're thinking about sharing is going to help you so much because you're going to know who you're talking to. So it's almost like you're having a direct conversation with that person. So you're going to let them know what they need to know about what you're doing, why you're doing it to help them make the decision to do it also. Val, that's enough. And then not forgetting who you were. And the, the, the when of remembering who you were when you were like them, that comes in with your who also. So a lot of times in this business, we don't know who our niche is. This was something that I struggled with for so long because I was thinking too hard about it. I was thinking way too much about figuring out who the heck I was talking to. Who's my niche? They would always ask, who's your avatar? I don't freaking know who my avatar is. I didn't know any of that stuff. And I would stress over it. But you know what your, who your avatar is? It's you. You're your avatar. You're trying to attract people that are like you. You're trying to attract yourself into your tribe and into your journey. So don't stress over who your niche is or who your avatar is or, or any of that because if you just remember who you were when, who you were yesterday, who you were last week, that's your niche. That's who you're talking to. So don't stress over not knowing because that was one thing I stressed over. It is definitely you. You're your avatar. And when I write my avatar, she's a lady in her 20s, her 30s, you know, struggling, making everybody first putting herself last, never buying anything for herself because she does it for her husband and does it for her kids and puts everyone at, even her friends, she puts her friends before herself. I just remember me. I just remember me. And that's the stuff that I share, especially when I go live and I speak live, I'm sharing a lot of my personal transitions in life, my turmoils that I went through, how I got through them to try to reach out and help those ladies that I'm trying to find. So remember who, what, why, and when. If you keep those four W's in mind, and that's funny, the four makes a W. If you keep those four W's in mind when you're posting and sharing, it's going to help you reach that person so much more. Because if you're just randomly posting out there and you don't know who you're posting to, then it's probably not really reaching the people you want. So you're getting a lot of people that want to try the journey and just want the discount. Meanwhile, I know the ladies that are on this call right now, they're wanting to build the business and they're building the business. But what you want is business builders. And a lot of good business builders come out of great challengers, but also people that have the mindset that they would like to get their shakes free or they would like to have some extra income for themselves. That's the people that I'm reaching because the moms that want to get their nails done but can't because they spend all their money on their kids. Well, if you do this, that's how I started. First, I wanted my shakes for free because I wanted to be healthy. Then I wanted to get my nails done. Then I wanted to get my hair done. And now I'm at the spot where I can go every three weeks to get my hair done until I want the color that I want. So it's just that the cycle of sharing all of that. And a lot of these people that have followed me have been following me since the beginning of starting this business. So they're watching the transformation. And they're watching what I used to not be able to do to what I can do now. You know, take the kids on a trip. I have a fun trip planned for their um, Thanksgiving break from school. So we're going to do something fun with that. Taking them to Mickey's Merry Christmas party. I think that's more for me than them. They don't even know because I want to go. So it's like little things like that that now I'm able to do. But when I share that I'm doing that, I'm going to remember the me that used to not be able to afford that. The me that I would watch all these families and all these moms be able to do these things for their kids. And I couldn't. And it was never like a jealousy thing, but it was always like, man, I wish I could do that for my kids. I would really love to do that. I'd really love to spoil them in that way and be able to make those memories before they're too old and they don't want to do those things with me because they're too cool. So you just have to remember those W's. Let me go into the chat. That's all I had to share with you, but I want to go in the chat to see what questions.
let's say, never used to share anything about the programs or what it was doing. Exactly. Once you start sharing, Michelle, that's when they start asking. And if you almost breadcrumb the share, like you don't tell them what shake you're drinking, you don't tell them what workout you're doing. Now their curiosity is even heightened even more. Like now they really want to know what is that shake? And see, I just call it my superfood shake or my superfood goodness or my liquid gold. So when people message me, they're like, what's that liquid gold you're always talking about? What's that superfood shake that you're always talking about? Because I do my Thirsty Thursday and I make a different Shakeology shake every Thursday. I make a healthy smoothie and I show them how to make it where they can really make it with any powder. I use my vanilla. So if they have vanilla protein powder, they can make it. But I always tell them, you know, mine's always going to be better than yours because I'm getting my vitamins. You're just getting protein. But I'm still adding value. I'm giving them a different smoothie that they can try that week. But I'm adding value while I'm actually plugging Shakeology without them realizing that I'm plugging Shakeology, if that makes any sense. Um, and yes, Michelle, that's fine. We, we kind of, that's kind of a thing within our little group that if we see a post that one of our girls did and we love it, we'll copy it, but don't copy and paste it 100%. Change it up to make it your own. You know, like whether you like Christina, how she loves to use tons of emojis. So she would copy and add all her emojis in there to make it different um, and change the wording to make sure it sounds like you because we all don't talk the same, even though we all are very much alike. And that's because we've shared our story the right way. and We're attracting people that are just like ourselves. So we all do kind of speak in the same ways. Um, but you know, like I would do, Hey girl, and someone else might say, Hey y'all. And you know what I mean? So everybody would have something a little bit different to make it more of them, but absolutely you can copy it, make it more like yourself. And then, you know, just make sure you're not hundred percent copying and pasting and not making it your own because then that's kind of a turnoff for people that might be following you and a different coach or maybe the coach that you copied it from. Yeah. Like I say, Hey mama, everything is mama. Mm-hmm. Uh, say good morning to everybody. Hey, Oe. Good morning. Oe, Tanya, your girlfriend is on the phone. Um, I'm like that too, Michelle. Actually, Matt, where's Lucy? Look. She's working. So Michelle, I'm like that too. Sometimes where I look at people's posts, I'm like, oh my god, they worded it so good, and sometimes. Sometimes I can't think of what to say. So what I've been doing lately that helps me is I hit the microphone and I speak the text of what I want to say and I just speak it how I would talk and then I'll go back back and like revamp it a little bit and stuff like that. But I just kind of like whatever I want to say, I put it out there and then I have like the the meats and potatoes, so to speak, of my posts and then I kind of just rearrange it, add things, stuff like that. Um, but I found that that has helped me a lot. And it's also helped me stay very authentic to how I speak and posting exactly how I would talk. But it's hard sometimes because we work out every day. So it's like, okay, how can I share this workout? What's different about this workout? So I just think about different things. Like today I am going to force Alex to work out with me. So I'm sure I will share something like that. Like, you know, Sometimes you need a push. Maybe it'll be a picture of me actually pushing him from behind into the garage. Like sometimes you just need a push to get your workout done, you know, something like that. Um, but I always just try to think of different things. That's the reason why I started adding music to my workouts and dancing and just having fun with it because I was getting bored with my workout posts. So if I was getting bored with them, everybody following me was getting completely bored with them. The same old sweaty selfie or a little clip of my move of the day or whatever it may be. So I try to do different things. Like I'll do a move of the day once a week, um, you know, and then each time I'm posting, I'm either sharing why I work out every day or if it was a struggle to work out, why it was a struggle and how I got myself through that struggle because not every day is going to be easy to work out. Um, you know, or if I had a victory during my workout, like the other day, yesterday, I was able to do three tricep push-ups on my feet. I've never been able to do them. I've always done them on my knees. So I, to me, that was a victory. So I posted about it because I was proud of myself. I was like, I went up in my weights, but what I'm most excited about is that I did three tricep push-ups. I actually did a couple extra, but they weren't good enough. <laughs> they weren't in proper form. So I didn't count them as a real push-up, but 
So it could be things like that. If you go up in your weights and you're proud of yourself because you're, you're doing better or like Tara, me and her talked yesterday, she wants to dial into her nutrition. So now she can share more of the nutrition side of her journey because she's doing great with sharing her fitness side. She's been going live with as being a sweaty mess every day after her workout, every night after her workout, and she stayed on track with it. And she's seeing the momentum is coming around. People are asking her, people are getting their shakes, they're getting started. So it's happening for her. It takes a little bit to get the momentum going, but it's happening. So now she wants to dial into the nutrition. So I challenged her and I'm putting her on blast with this challenge. So everybody on this team call knows her challenge. Her challenge is to post at least one healthy meal of the day and either share that recipe to add value to people. So they're gonna look for that one healthy meal that Tara's gonna post each day so they have a meal that they can cook tomorrow. And, or she can share how easy it was to make or if she food prepped it, how she food prepped it to make it easy for herself. Adding value to those moms that are so busy working full time and trying to do something to better themselves. So that was a challenge that I gave her is to share one one healthy meal because now that means Tara's having at least two healthy meals a day because she drinks her Shakeology every day. So I challenged her to post one picture of a healthy meal. And Tara, I'm going to take that one step further. I'm going to challenge you today. And I'm not going to say why, but you know why. But I'm not going to say why because I think, not sure if you have your headphones in or not, but I challenge you to post a healthy meal from today while you're having a nice time. Find something healthy and post and share. I'm not going to get into detail until she puts her headphones on. <laughs> if she puts her headphones on. I can't um, hear you. Hold on. I don't know what happened. I took my headphones out and then I couldn't hear you. Hold on. What'd you say? Okay. Well, now you have your headphones in so Owen can't hear me. Um, I said that I'm going to take your challenge of you posting one healthy meal a day. I'm going to take it one step further and challenge you to post one healthy meal a day on your travel day. Okay. Share how, but I didn't want to say that because the kids don't know they're going somewhere. No, they know. They know I told them. Um, mm -hmm. So I want you to share about how you can, you can go away with your family, you can have fun with your family, but you can still stay on track with your nutrition because you can't ask them for healthier choices when you're asking for your meals to be made. Something like that. And so, also uh, this. Exactly. <laughs> so you can you can share you can share your shake today while you're traveling and then you can share a picture of a healthy meal and and like tag where you are and just say oh even, you're so sweet baby. even when traveling or even when on vacation or even when away from the house where someone else is cooking for me there's still healthy options you just have to be okay to ask because that's what i found i go to restaurants and i'll ask them to change something for me to make it more towards our meal plan mm -hmm. and they don't have a problem doing it so that's my yeah. answer and and I have a tip for that just in case anybody is um, interested when you go to a place especially like like on Friday nights we usually go to Applebee's so when you go to a place that's like that that's just like mass-produced food mass-produced food key word is allergies allergy yep. <laughs> because then they'll change whatever you they'll, want they'll cook just your food sure. items by itself right yep Instead of with tons of butter and stuff like that. Absolutely. Yep. I've used that one. I've used that one before. Nope. I'm allergic. All my food has to be cooked by itself. I'm allergic to butter. Whatever I want to say. Just so they can make it by themselves. So absolutely. That can absolutely. Well, if I was allergic to butter, I wouldn't be alive this long because I would have killed myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I think I answered all the questions here. Does anybody else have any questions on the W's? before we end our call or questions on anything why we're all here. No questions. Okay. We are quiet this morning. I didn't get a chance to say good morning to Nat and Christina. So good morning, ladies. It's, it's too cozy out today. Yeah. Not here in Florida. It was raining. I don't know if it's still oh, just gloomy now. That's cozy weather to me. Yeah. I have two things that kind of aren't like related to the call, but um, I have um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I have like ten people. Can you guys hear me? Yes. I have like ten people that have signed up through like TV or wherever they sign up, and I've been assigned as their coach. 
And out of those 10 people, I've had two people respond to my email, like my welcome email that I do. Um, so it seems like, you know, the people don't know that they actually need a coach to, to be doing what they're doing or they're not even doing it. They're just like ordering it, which whatever. Natalie and I have talked about this a lot. Um, but I wish there was a way we could maybe get a hold of corporate so they could maybe give them a better message or sometimes they're not even given the right information. Yeah. I find myself like backtracking to go back and like start all over with them, but it's hard only doing it through email. So like some of them aren't on Facebook. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them aren't on Facebook. So, and I don't really know them. So, you know, to be like, Oh, do you want to be Facebook friends? It's kind of weird. That's the first thing I wanted to, um, Oh, Michelle, you got to get over. It's kind of weird with the Facebook friends thing. It's I not. have had, I have had so many people that they're like, how do I know you? And I'm honest with them. I'm like, you know, we're in a mutual, we're in a mutual group together, or you look like somebody I would be um, interested in, you know, I don't use the word networking, but something along those lines. But as far as your leads are concerned with the non-responsiveness, I have a theory about that. I have a theory that they think that if it's just one email, that it's like an Autobot mm -hmm. that is sending right. it. Right, right. Um, or two, they're like, holy shit, how'd you get my contact right. information? And right. they're completely weirded out. So yeah. like whatever you think that corporate should be doing, put it in your email. You know, yeah, I know I that you don't and know me from whoever, whatever. But yeah, and I would just keep on sending it. Not the same one, right. but just keep on. Um, this is reaching. what I do that I have found has helped me with my leads because for the longest time, I would send my welcome email and then I would send like, you know, the e cards every once in a while and things like that just to remind them that I'm around. Well, this year I've been doing the text messages and this is how I've been doing it. And I'm finally getting people to respond to me. And I do ask them if they're on Facebook once they respond to me. And I'll say specifically for, you know, are you on Facebook? Because I run, you know, virtual accountability groups on Facebook that help people stay on track, whether it's just with their shakes or with their fitness or just to be in a community that's all doing the same thing. It really helps you stay on track. And I would love to have you be a part of that. Right. Then it takes that ickiness out of, hey, are you on Facebook? Let's be friends, you know, like feeling like we're five. You want to be my friend? You know, so it takes that out of it. So. What I've been doing with my leads is I'll send them the welcome email and I send them like a welcome text. And I can right. send you from my Google Docs what my welcome text says. But it's basically like, hey, I'm Tanya Chris. I'm your free beach body coach. Um, Don't do what I did though. <laughs> yeah. Huh? The first time Tanya sent that to me and I copied and pasted it and I forgot to change, change the name. <laughs> 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 yeah. It never responded anyway, so they didn't know the difference. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and, and I say, you know, I sent you a welcome email, but I also wanted to send you this message just in case you don't get the email. And I want to make sure you have my contact information. Please feel free. Don't hesitate to ask me any questions you may have on your journey. That's what I'm here for. It's a simple. Yeah, I do. I do all that stuff. And I didn't mean that I'm like weird about the Facebook friend because I don't care. If they're weird about it. Oh. And I followed up with them too. And been like, I just wanted to make sure you got my email. And I kind of followed Natalie's email that she sent, but I changed the words a little bit, so it sounded like it was me. Mm -hmm. um, you didn't call yourself Tanya Chris, did you? No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to go back in today and do follow-ups, you know, as a reply to the email from before. Um, mm -hmm. And the other thing I wanted to say was um, – I went to the doctor's office to have a checkup a couple of days ago and the nurse there asked me what I was doing because she said, oh, I think you lost, I don't know, five pounds in three months or whatever. So she's signing up today. That's awesome. And that she's my nurse awesome. like from my Yay. doctor's office. That's awesome. Oh, you. Once yeah, I brought up the beach bun. You definitely need to share that. Like right. when she does sign up and start her journey, just be like, it's such a great feeling when you've inspired nurse at your doctor's office that you go to for your annual checkup mm -hmm. to start this journey with you because they're seeing the differences in my body. Right. You know? Yeah. The two nurses that I forgot to tell you, Tanya, the two nurses that when I went yesterday, um, 
they were like, give me your contact information because I want to know what's going on. And blah, 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 blah. So I think that they may be signing good. up too. Very good. That's awesome. Great job, ladies. Another thing that I do, Michelle, and for everybody, is I'll check, when I check my back office, I also check recent um, orders. What I do is the beginning of each month, I go into the previous month and I check customer orders. And I message all of them. Are you leaving? I message all of them that placed an order, especially if it was Shakeology and it was like their third month of Shakeology, or if it was, um, you know, if they ordered a challenge pack or if they got just Beachbody on demand, all access, and I'll send them a text message. Like, hey, I see that last month, you or, you know, a couple weeks ago, you ordered your all access. Have you tried any of the programs? Do you have a favorite yet? You know, just a little text like that because like Tara said, a lot of times I think they think it's an auto reply. A lot of companies have those auto replies, whether it's the email or even sometimes companies will send text messages now. So if you every few weeks just kind of send a text like, hey, it's Tanya, just checking in. I just want to let you know that I'm still here, you know, something like that. If they eventually want you to stop, they're going to just say, hey, stop texting me. Some, you have no idea. We might be texting a landline, and that's why they're not answering because some of these people probably still have landline phones, so we don't even know if it's really a cell phone number, you know? And then another thing that I do to try to find them on Facebook is I copy their email address and I paste it in the search on Facebook to see if they, there's an account with that email address to see if I didn't find my own customer. And then if I find them, I add it and I send them a message. Like, hey, I'm your free Beachbody coach. I'm glad that I found you on here because I run a lot of my accountability groups and fun groups right here on Facebook. So I'm glad I found you. Something like that. And I search them out. Because what's the one thing, if you're talking to somebody through Messenger, and they're like, oh, yeah, I have 21 Day Fix in Chickology. And then you're like, oh, well, who's your coach? I don't have one. Yes, you do. So that means that that coach is not doing what they're supposed to be doing as their coach. They haven't reached out to them. They haven't tried to help them. So a lot of these people don't even know that they have a coach. So if we just make sure that we every, like, once a month or something like that, send a text or every few weeks, send a text or an email or try to find them on social media, you know, at least you're doing your due diligence as their coach of what, what our job is, you know, is to coach them and to help them. But, like, I sent out tons to my customers yesterday. I didn't get one response back. But my mindset on it is I just want to send this message so they know that I'm here. So my outcome of me sending the message I feel satisfied with it because I did what I wanted to do, not I want them to respond to me. If they don't respond to me, that's okay. I'll try again in a few weeks. And it took me one person, it took me seven different text messages to where they first, they finally responded back. And then they're, because they weren't ready to start. So they didn't want to respond to their coach and say, okay, I bought it all, but I'm not ready to start for a few weeks. So it took well, them a few text messages to respond back. Yeah, that's what Eric said when we were doing is it Eric? That's his name, the Teamsy mm -hmm. guy? Mm -hmm. He said it takes on average 10 okay. connects. Mm -hmm. So yep. keep that in mind. Yep. Yep. It takes a long time. And I'm not one to give up. Christina knows that. You can ghost on me all you want. I'm still going to send you a message every few weeks because I'm just going to let you know I'm here because that's the type of coach that I am. I'm going to be there for you, whether you're going to be there for yourself or not. So even if I'm just sending you a message, like just wanted to say hi, just thinking of you and wanted to say hi, it's just to let the person know I'm still here. So when you're ready, I'm here. You just need to let me know. But if I stop messaging them, they're going to think maybe she doesn't coach anymore. Maybe, maybe she doesn't want to help me anymore. So I always just try to keep it in mind of, you know, just a quick hi, letting them know I'm here if they need anything. That's just like when you're trying to help a friend that might be going through depression or, or they're having a hard time in life. You don't want to push on them and you don't want to be all up in their face. But in the same sense, you still want them to know that you're there. So you'll send them like a, hey girl type, you know, text message or like I'm here if you need me type message. You know, you don't want to harass them, but you don't want to leave them alone because then they think you're not there for them, if that makes any sense. That's kind of how I think about my customers. Um, Anybody else have any other questions? Yeah, Christina wrote that she has leads from two years ago that still don't respond to her. And that's just how some of them are. Sometimes they, they want to start it because it's the newest fad. Or it was January and they decided they wanted their New Year resolution to be to lose 10 pounds, but then they didn't do anything to do it. Or there's somebody that just likes to do it on their own. 
They don't want a coach trying to help them or be in a group or anything like that. They just want to do it on their own. Like I had one girl that was asking me about the fitness programs that I do. And when I, I told her about the group, she's like, oh, I'm not a group person. I do everything on my own. I'm like, that's fine. Then, the, okay. Then that means I don't really have to help you that much if you do it on your own. Um, so some people just like to do their journey by themselves. Do we have any other questions? Nope. All right, then that's all I have for you guys. So make sure that you keep the four W's in mind. Sharing. Thank you. You're welcome. Bye, guys. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs> I already clicked them.